Hi, in this video I'll show you how I made this GoPro Roll Access Gimbal, how it works, how it compares to real steady go, horizon lock and various combinations of digital and mechanical stabilization. At first I looked for DIY options like the Storm 32 board and aftermarket brushless gimbal motors, but I soon came to the conclusion that it would have been very difficult and time consuming to make this all from scratch. 3D modeling, prototyping and tuning would have taken very long time and the result wouldn't have been as reliable and compact as something out of the shelf. So this came to my mind. Someone must have gone this route before and there surely is a market for some kind of one axis gimbal. And I was right, there are plenty of phone selfie sticks around there and some include roll gimbals already built and tuned. Phones weigh as much as GoPro and I don't think there is going to be any kind of problem handling them. So I searched on Aliexpress for the cheapest knockoff phone gimbal and I found this L08 for 20 euros and one week shipping from Europe. And there it is. It also comes with a tripod, I'm using it to hold my microphone. So double deal. I disassembled it and cut the gimbal from the support arm and designed some parts to attach it to my quad and firmly fixing the GoPro to it. This is the first iteration of the design. Later I'll show you the second one which includes a standard GoPro attachment that lets you use it on whatever GoPro thing you own. When you take it apart you need to desolder the three motor wires and pass them through the sole very carefully since they are magnet wires and are covered by an isolating paint. If you scratch them they could short and burn your motor, burn your board or prevent the gimbal from working properly. To reassemble it you need to drill three holes on the back of the bed by aligning the printed attachment to mark the holes and then making them with a drill or a soldering iron. I prefer the iron because it melts the plastic and reduces the stress around the holes. Trust me, I'm an engineer, almost, well hopefully in a couple of years. After that you have to fit like 10 to 15 mm M3 screws like these ones from the inside and put rubber nuts on the back. Then you will have to put the nut back on. It's very easy to forget and I did it twice. Don't forget to nut. The nut. Don't forget the nut. Now solder the motor wires and screw the board in place. I made the GoPro mount in such a way that it fits on the screw holes of the gimbal. Here I used 8mm M2 screws, but then I went with 10mm. Use 10 or 12. 8 is a bit too short. It works like a shot. The gimbal V1 weighs in at 83 grams, 132 with the naked GoPro and 201 with a full Hero 7 Black. My build right here is a Banggood Apex like frame, 2207, 1700 kV, Rush 800 mW, Runcam Phoenix, Crossfire, and 45M F7 stack. Now, a little boop to the cat, and we're ready to test. Since it was a nice day and we were in the mountain, we thought to have a BBQ up here. Now in the first test I've got a Hero 6 with a gimbal versus gimbal and real steady go versus gimbal real steady go and uh, horizon lock. In the top left there is gimbal real steady go and horizon lock. You can see it's a little more stable.
Now here I have my Hero 6 on a fixed mount and I'm still testing Horizon Lock, Real Steady Go and Standard Mount. Real Steady Go, Horizon Lock is doing a great job. Now here we have Gimbal and Real Steady Go with no Horizon Lock and Southern Mount with Real Steady Go. This is not the same flight, but I tried to match it as close as I could. So now, this is what you were waiting for. Gimbal, Real Steady Go and Horizon Lock vs Real Steady Go and Horizon Lock. The gimbal video is zooming a lot in because I was hitting a branch and I made a weird movement. Now the tests with the Hero 7. It's stabilizing really well. Do you see that? I love it. Now we have gimbal and hypersmooth versus only gimbal. After reviewing the footage I wasn't satisfied with the result. I think that dives were not the proper test for this tool, because it works best when it is straight up, so with a 15 degrees mount it works best when the drone is inclined forwards at 15 degrees, which didn't happen often in my test, which was mostly around 35 or 40 degrees. I did a second test orbiting this palm with a 35 degrees angle. And even though I'm flying pretty badly, the gimbal is doing a better job than the standard mount, which is to be expected. Now for the conclusions. This is a tool and it's made for cinematics. The best case scenarios are constant speed chasings and long range explorations. It could also give an extra bit of peace of mind in drift videos. This is obviously not made specifically for racing or freestyle, even though it is tough and could withstand medium crashes, it will surely not hold up in 60 miles an hour concrete face for seats. All the files are available on Thingiverse, I've put links in the description to them and to AliExpress for the gimbal. If you're in Europe and you don't own a 3D printer or just prefer to get it already built, I will be having a parts and build service. The parts are available for all the GoPros from 5 to 9 and also GoPro Hero Session 4 and 5 Insta360 1R and DJI Osmo Action. And the drone mounts are universal fit. 
meaning that there will be space for you to drill your own holes, but you will probably find a mount for the GoPro standard joint on Thingiverse for your frame. The price for the parts will be 15 euros and 55 for the full build. Send me a message on Facebook, Instagram or here on YouTube if you're interested. I will be adding links to my social, like, comment and subscribe so you will not miss my next video. Thanks, bye!